Hi, I'm Sarah Bronin, and I created Property Law 101 to help you learn about property law. We deal with four fundamental questions in this series, and today we are talking about the second, which is how do we come to acquire property? We are talking about adverse possession, which is the legal doctrine that allows someone who is occupying land owned on paper by someone else to come to own that land. Every state lays out a specific statutory period for the adverse possessor to be on the property before he or she can claim rights to it. But what happens if the adverse possessor stops possessing the property halfway through the statutory period? Consider this scenario. Bob moves onto the property in year one. He marries Steve in year five. Tragically, he dies in year six leaving all of his property to Steve in the will. Let's say in that jurisdiction, the statutory period is 10 years. So the question is, does Steve have any rights to the property? Courts will answer this question by considering the question of tacking. So the court will ask whether Steve can tack onto the rights of Bob that Bob acquired in years one through four. In considering the answer, courts will usually draw from contract principles and specifically the principle of privity. So privity means a connection between two parties, which is based on a mutual legal interest. Here, a deed passed on over the years, or in this case, a will might be enough to show privity. Why would a court require privity? Well, because the court doesn't just want anyone to benefit from the work of a prior possessor. The prior possessor and the current possessor has to have some kind of relationship. The same is true for uh, true owners. So let's say Donna owned a parcel uh, for uh, 12 years, uh, Donna adversely possessed a parcel rather uh, for 12 years and the statutory period in that jurisdiction is 10 years. Yet the property changed ownership three times during that 10 year period. The court will look to the way that the property changed ownership during that period. And they will say that the, from one seller to the next, as long as there was a contract between them or some relationship that, give, that gave the subsequent seller rights to the prior seller, going all the way back to when Donna started adversely possessing the property uh, 12 years ago, that is enough to show that Donna can, it, it can force the current uh, true owner to tack on to the sloth of the prior uh, true owners. Related to the concept of tacking, whether it's uh, on tacking on the work of the adverse possessor or tacking uh, the, on the sloth of prior true owners is the concept of relating back. This means that once an adverse possessor acquires title to property, the adverse possessor is deemed to have possessed the property from the time the first the of the adverse possessor first entered onto the property. So it's important to understand with all of this in mind that embedded in adverse possession law is the principle that people can tack onto the work of others and that there is flexibility in tacking onto the sloth of prior true owners. For true owners, the lesson here is really to not sleep on their rights and to monitor property. For adverse possessors, the lesson is that you have to have some kind of document, relationship, or arrangement with subsequent adverse possessors so that they can benefit from your work. So that's tacking. I will leave it there and I hope you will engage with me on Twitter, through my website, through my mailing list, and I will see you next time. Thank you.